Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the NIN series of Geosynthetic Webinar under the theme Capillary Barrier System and Geo Barrier System for Slope Protection Against Rainfall. This event is brought to you by International Geosynthetic Society, Jupiter Indonesia, which also known as INIGS. My name is Stephanie Bigel, and it's a pleasure to be a master of ceremony of this event. Before we start, please allow me to read the rundown of our event this evening. First, I will be reading the rules of the webinar. Second, there will be an opening remark by the member of INIGS, Mr. Insinyur Hendra Hidayat. After that, the event will be guided by Dr. Indar Karlina Sari as a moderator. To start the presentation of Professor Haryanto Rahadjo. The event will then continue with a Q&A session. After the Q&A session, we will be doing a quiz with a very interesting prize for the winner. So we would like to ask you to stay with us until the end of the event. At the end of the event, we'll also give you the access to the e-certificate and that's all for the rundown of today's webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, for your own convenience, please put attention to the following rules and notice. First, you can submit your question for the speaker through the Q&A feature that located at the bottom of the screen and the question should be in English. You can submit their questions before, during, and after the presentation of the speaker. Second, we expect you to stay with us until the end of the webinar to get the information that you need regarding a certificate and also the soft copy of the presentation from the speaker. Third, this event is also live streamed in NIGS YouTube channel, or you can directly go to the link bit.ly slash NIGS09YT. Fourth, if there's any technical difficulties, please contact Mr. Sandy at the number that has been shown on the screen. That's all for the rules and notice. Without any further ado, I would like to invite Mr. Insinyur Hendra Hidayat as the member of NIGS to give his opening remark. To Mr. Hendra Hidayat, the time is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, who are virtually connected. Thank you very much for preparing yourself to join our webinar. Welcome to the webinar organized by INA IGS, which is an International Geosynthetic Society, Indonesian chapter. I understand most of today's participants are well informed about our organization. However, for those who just joined this webinar, I would like to inform you about our OJ organization. The International Geosynthetic Society, or IGS, is a learned society dedicated to the scientific and engineering development of geosynthetic, which includes geotextiles, geomembranes, related products, and associated technologies. The core purpose of the IGS is to provide the understanding and promote the appropriate use of the synthetic technology throughout the world. My name is Hendra. I'm representing INA IGS to give a short remark before the webinar is about to begin. A short background of INA IGS. We are established in 1994, which is almost three decades of existence in Indonesia. One of our mission is to improve our domestic infrastructure construction industry through a correct application on geosynthetics. The infrastructure development which is involved geosynthetics can be as a highways, railways, plantation, mining, onshore structure, etc. In 2021, we have a firm monthly regular schedule for webinars which have been started since January 2021 with high-profile speakers from Indonesia and international experts on geosynthetic. So please don't forget to join our next webinar next month in November and December 2021 as well. We also have planned to hold another Indonesia geosynthetic conference for next year or in 2023 or when the pandemic is over as we had before in Jakarta, in 
back in 2016 and 2017. In this opportunity, I would like to invite corporates, engineers, students, educators who involved in the construction industry, especially in geotechnical infrastructure development, to become our INA IGS members. You may contact our secretariat for the details. There are many benefits to become members, such as access to hundreds of IGS conferences, proceedings, journal, etc. Today, webinar topic is capillary barriers system or CBS and geo barrier system or GBS for slow protection against rainfall, which will be presented by presented by uh, Professor Harian Barahan. The moderator will introduce Professor Harian Toleta. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you very much for preparing yourself to join our webinar. And personally, I thank you to Professor Harianto, Dr. Linda, and the organizing committee who makes this nine webinar can be implemented as scheduled. Now I shall ask my colleague to commence the session. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hendra Hidayat, for your kind remarks. Let us. Thank you, Mr. Hindra Dayat, for your kind remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to remind you that you can start submit your question from now on by using Q&A feature. We would also want to remind you to stay with us until the end of the event for the quiz session and to get the information regarding the e-certificate and the soft copy of the presentation. Now, this webinar will be guided by Dr. Rinda Karlina Sari as the moderator. Please welcome Dr. Rinda Karlina Sari. The time is yours. Uh, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, peace be upon all of us. Uh, today, Indonesian chapter of the International Geosynthetic Society invite Professor Haryanto Rahajo from NTU as a speaker. Uh, let me introduce him briefly. Uh, professor Haryanto Rahajo is uh, currently a professor of school of Civil and Environmental Engineering, Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. He has over 40 years of teaching, research, and uh, consulting expertise in geotechnical engineering. Um, many of us know him from his book, Soil Mechanics of Unsaturated Soil. He is the author, along with Professor uh, DG Fredland and uh, Dr. MD uh, Fredland. Professor Raharjo has uh, conducted extensive research on unsaturated soil mechanic to solve geotechnical problem associated with tropical residual soil. His research focus has been on rainfall induced landslide. Uh, Professor Raharjo's uh, recent research activity involved the application of unsaturated soil mechanics in capillary barrier system for slope stabilization and landfill uh, capping. Uh, recently, uh, Professor Harjo and his team have developed a uh, geo-barrier system as a retraining structure. And today, Professor will present his research for us. Uh, the title is Capillary Barrier System or CBS and Geo-Barrier System or GBS uh, for Slope Protection Against Rainfall. The presentation will take 45 minutes to 60 minutes and then following by question and answer for uh, 20 minutes. Uh, not, now let us begin. Professor Harianto, now the time is yours. Thank you, Dr. Rinda. And uh, 
First of all, I would like to thank the uh, International Geotechnical Society Indonesian chapter for inviting me uh, to this uh, webinar, right? And uh, it is my pleasure to meet up with all of you and uh, good evening. Selamat sorry. Um, I think without further ado, I would like to just uh, do my presentation that I'll share. <clears throat> All right. Uh, this is the title of my um, uh, presentation on the capillary barrier system and geobarrier system for slope protections uh, against rainfall. So uh, we are aware of the uh, challenges um, forced upon us with respect to the uh, global climate change, increase in the uh, temperature, yeah? and depending on the uh, different uh, models uh, that we have, uh, the increase in temperature uh, can be quite significant. As a result, the increase in the uh, annual rainfall uh, uh, will um, uh, inadvertently yeah, occur in many parts of the world, and also the uh, annual mean temperature. Uh, this is an, just an example uh, for a Singapore case. Yeah, the rainfall intensity increases throughout the year and also the uh, annual uh, mean temperature. Of course, uh, this is only the period until 2016 and 2014. Uh, if we look at the um, area that uh, saw the most uh, intense rainfall in one hour, right? so this is uh, the uh, quite a number of areas in this um, a small uh, location uh, place that uh, experience um, a very high intensity rainfall. So uh, the the other thing is the number of days that um, the, with the intense uh, rainfall also increases. Right. So climate change results in the increase in rainfall intensity and duration. The changes in rainfall intensity. Uh, events um, affect the urban sustainability, especially slope stability and uh, tree stability. In some cases, we have a fallen tree. In some part of our research also dedicated to uh, the stability of trees um, due to uh, rainfall loading and the wind load. And unsaturated soil mechanics principles are necessary for uh, adaptations to climate change with respect to urban uh, sustainability. Uh, here is the um, historical slope failures uh, from 1982 to 2017. Uh, so uh, quite a bit um, of uh, slope failures may not be in the big scale, but um, uh, this type of slope failures due to rainfall, okay, uh, we plotted here against the uh, maximum uh, daily rainfall, right? So, it, um, it can be quite costly. Okay? In some cases, uh, uh, can be quite dangerous yeah, for the um, uh, for people. Uh, this one of the largest one happened uh, in 1989 uh, near a stadium, yeah, a slope failure. And uh, uh, fortunately, it occurred uh, after midnight. So um, it covered half of the, of the stadium. And this is uh, another uh, slope failures in 2006, uh, during the period when uh, we had a very large uh, rainfall in Singapore. Uh, here on campus, a particular day uh, in 1995, we have 20 of this type of slope failures all around uh, NTU campus. Okay? So uh, again, the, um, uh, the cost uh, of the repair and also the damages to the drain and, and uh, other infrastructures can be quite significant. Uh, in 2006, December, we have one of the largest rainfall ever recorded in Singapore, 
Uh, here are these uh, distributions of the rainfall, and these are the slope failures that occur uh, in that particular period. And one thing that we learned that um, the uh, occurrences of the slope failure did not coincide with the um, highest uh, rainfall amount. Right? So uh, one thing that is uh, quite clear that the, the role of the soil properties um, affect the um, uh, infiltration. Right? So some uh, soil uh, um, able to take in the amount of uh, rainfall and change the water pressure, shear strength, and causes failure. And some of them uh, will uh, delay um, the amount of uh, infiltration as a result uh, that could be a, a daily uh, failure. So again, in 2007, okay, similarly, okay, this is the highest uh, rainfall, but uh, many of the slope failures uh, actually um, did not coincide with the largest amount of rainfall. Uh, these are the locations of uh, slope failures all around the island. So um, resulting from this, uh, we, we had a collaboration with the uh, Housing uh, Development Board, uh, Singapore, that uh, built about, uh, uh, now I think it's more than 73%. They was uh, data a number of years ago. Uh, uh, all the flats are actually built by this um, Housing Development Board, HDB. So, they also um, realize the, the problem that uh, uh, encounter around their precincts, uh, around the housing area, so respect to the uh, slope failure. So that's why uh, we initiated the collaborations with them uh, in, in a way how to uh, tackle this problem. So um, the HDB and NTU, um, of course, will engage the uh, consultant and contractor in this case, and uh, uh, to appraise the crit particularly uh, critical slopes, right? And then uh, use the uh, uh, technology, new technology, particularly respect to the unsighted soil mechanics for uh, slope repair. Yeah? Okay, so what actually the problem? Yeah, many of the steep residual soil slopes, right? Um, it can be quite steep, can be quite high, and the water table uh, usually quite deep. Yeah? Now the zone above it, okay, they call it the unsaturated zone. The pore water pressure is negative, or we, what we call it suction, yeah, matrix suction. This negative pore water pressures. Yeah, it's very good for the slope because um, the negative water pressure of suction contributes to the shear strength of the, uh, of the, the soil. Uh, as a result, you can have a slope um, uh, quite steep and quite high. However, due to this uh, rainfall infiltration yeah, and this <clears throat> uh, negative water pressure or suctions yeah, can be um, reduce, right? the amount of suction can decrease. As a result, the shear strength decreases. As a result, the factor of safety okay, uh, can be quite low and uh, causing failure. So many of these problems are actually um, shallow slip surfaces near the ground surface because this is the zone that has highest negative water pressure or suction. So this is the zone, yeah, they call it the unsaturated zone, that comes in contact with environment. Yeah, we, when we talk about rainfall, infiltrations, evaporations, or transpirations, yeah, all the, we call it the flux boundary condition due to the environment affecting yeah, our ground, yeah, our soil okay, in this zone uh, above the water table. So when we talk about climate change, we are talking about the interaction between unsaturated soil and the climate. Yeah. So this is the zone that we need to take care of because this zone well, is going to change in terms of the water pressures and shear strength. And then when it comes to a very low shear strength, uh, factor safety can be quite low and failure may occur, okay? 
So uh, I'm not going to go through all the theory because the theory is um, like Dr. Rin, uh, Rinda mentions that, that um, we have the book on Ancytosol. So this is um, the first book on Ancytosol uh, and uh, it was in 1993 uh, published by Wiley and already uh, translated to uh, several languages. This is uh, by Tsinghua professors in Man to Mandarin. This is to Vietnamese. Yeah? This to Spanish uh, by a professor from Mexico. And this is uh, the Japanese version of it. Yeah? And this is our second book, okay, in terms of the applications of unsighted souls right, into uh, flow problems and uh, slope problems, right, and uh, other uh, geotechnical problems. Yeah? So as a result of these collaborations with uh, HDB, uh, we set up several uh, sites for fully uh, instrument, uh, full instrumentation where we um, measure the pore water pressure changes, the amount of uh, rainfall to deduce the infiltration, the amount of runoff, right? Uh, so all this, um, in order to understand the slope behavior under rainfall, uh, particularly yeah, in the different parts of uh, Singapore. Um, you could have a quite a wide variation in terms of the soil properties and also rainfall uh, distributions in Singapore. Okay. So these are typical setup for um, uh, instrumented slopes. Yeah, So we have uh, basically piezometer, Tensiometers to measure negative pressure, piezometer to measure water pressures, positive pressure and water table, and also weather station, and uh, uh, all hooked up to a uh, data acquisition system, okay, uh, and run by the uh, solar panel. So uh, these are the, all the instrumented slopes, yeah, all around uh, Singapore. So next is the, this is an example how the, uh, slope has been instrumented, one of them. And then all these boxes actually is the protective boxes uh, to basically uh, protect all those uh, tensiometers from being damaged uh, because of the glass cutting activities. Right? So the rain gauge, piezometer, inconometer, all hooked up to a data system uh, housed to, uh, in the data logger here, connected to the data logger. So that's uh, the... <clears throat> Field measurements. Eh? Uh, how about the uh, soil property itself, eh? particularly the unsaturated soil properties? Yes, we look into the um, property of unsaturated soil. Yeah, the shear strength, the hydraulic behavior, and also the uh, other uh, properties. Eh? The, tonight, I'm just going to discuss about the. Uh, uh, hydraulic properties, right? Because these hydraulic properties are very important in controlling uh, many properties of unsaturated soil. Okay, so for example, we call it the soil water characteristic curve or SWCC of different soil types. There is the amount of water okay, that the uh, soil can hold under suction value. Okay, you can imagine here this is the amount of suction. Yeah. 1,000, okay, 100 kilopascal suction, right? And uh, this is for clay. Clay can hold water under suction, okay? When you dry the clay, it remains um, almost saturated in terms of the volumetric water content uh, before you reach this point and then clay will give up the amount of water. So this is the soil water characteristic of the clay. For sand, the pores are big. Yeah, for clay, the pores are very small. That's why you can hold water uh, under dry condition before it starts to be saturated. So for sand, only for a low air entry value remains saturated. Beyond that, water content decreases rapidly. Yeah? Or silty soil will be in between. Okay? Now this are the uh, ability of the soil to hold water okay, under different suction or under different uh, dryness of soil, right? It varies from the clay to sand. That is why we call it the soil water characteristic curve of a given soil, okay? Even if you take a uh, filter geotextile, uh, this medium also exhibits yeah, 
uh, so I mean uh, the um, uh, geotextile uh, or filtered uh, characteristic curve, right? So for the drying okay, and the wetting, yeah, they are not the same because this exhibit what we call it hysteresis. Yeah? So the drying and wetting, we can measure this also in the laboratory. Yeah? So these are all those devices that are available for the measurements of salt water characteristic curve. Yeah, we have a pressure plate. And then we have um, uh, a different uh, capacity. Uh, you can uh, apply suction to 100 kilopascal all the way up to 1,500 kilopascal. How come the suction can be so high? Because there is the wilting point of trees. Yeah? People in agriculture and soil science, they know okay? when uh, a tree dies, that means the suctions in the soil already reaches this 1,500 kilopascal, the wilting point of the tree. Uh, the root no longer capable to suck water from the soil when the soil has that amount of negative water pressure or suction. That is why many of these devices yeah, are originally developed by the soil science or the agriculture people. Then we adopted into geotechnical engineering. And all those are presented in the book that um, we uh, uh, already uh, uh, published. It, yeah? So other uh, method is uh, using evaporation. Let the soil evaporate and measure the amount of uh, suction inside the soil. And then that is uh, from there, we can get the uh, water characteristic curve. Right? And uh, or we measure the relative humidity. right? The drier the soil, the lower will be the relative humidity. Let's measure the relative humidity of that soil. And we use this, uh, the uh, dew point potentiometer or WP4C. Um, in 2000, yeah, we organized um, the first Asian conference on unsighted soil in Singapore. Okay? Um, here is Professor Freeland and uh, myself. We were still quite young at the time. And he said, uh, uh, late Professor Jeff Blight from uh, Johannesburg, yeah? and uh, this is uh, Professor David Toll, right? Uh, uh, he was uh, with me yeah, in NTU for uh, about two years. Uh, he spent his sabbatical. Uh, so around this time, uh, uh, the year 2000. Okay, let's go back to soil uh, water characteristic curve. So now we know yeah, for fine grain soil, yeah, you can maintain high water content in, and then eventually will decrease yeah, at a high suction. For coarse grain like uh, uh, gravel, yeah, you maintain uh, saturation for a very low suction and start to decrease. Right? So these are the soil water characteristics uh, for fine grain soil and the coarse grain soil. Now I'm trying to um, uh, make a statement here. Uh, for the fine grain, respect to the capillary barrier and geobarrier system, we are talking about known cohesive. So this is not clay, but we're talking about sand over gravel. Yeah. So now we can see yeah, uh, sand remains saturated for very high suction before it becomes uh, unsaturated. But for gravel, it only remains saturated at the low suction and start to decrease. Now, Water can only flow through the pores that are filled with water. So if I ask you, what is the permeability of gravel at saturation, you know, fully saturated compared to uh, sand, of course, gravel will have a very high uh, saturated permeability compared to sand because the pores of gravel are larger than the pores of sand. However, as we increase the suction, or dry up the soil, the uh, amount of water in gravel will decrease very rapidly. As a result, yeah, the permeability of gravel also decreases very rapidly. Yeah, remember, water can only flow through the pores that are filled with water. However, for sand, it can remain saturated for quite uh, uh, high um, uh, suction before it starts to desaturate. So the permeability of sand remains high, okay? um, then start to decrease. So in this regard, okay, for this zone, unsaturated zone, okay, unsaturated range, you could 
have a condition where the permeability of sand being higher than the permeability of gravel under unsaturated condition. Yeah. So this is a paradigm shift in a way that uh, you're thinking always that gravel has a higher permeability compared to clay or to sand. Of course, this is at saturation. But at unsaturated condition, you could have permeability of sand being higher than the permeability of gravel okay, under uh, the same uh, suction value. Now, keep that principle because that is the principle for a capillary barrier system. So what we have in here, how about if I put sand in here? I want to protect this slope here. I, uh, the color is green. So I will uh, have a, a layer of sand and a layer of gravel. So when it rains, okay, uh, infiltrations take place okay, to enter the green, fine green layer or the sand layer. Then after that, the water realizes it. The permeability of the fine green layer is higher than the permeability of coarse green layer. So water will flow along the sand as opposed to penetrate the uh, gravel. So that means this gravel acts as a barrier because under unsaturated conditions, your sand has higher permeability yeah, compared to the gravel. Yeah. So with this, uh, you can capture that uh, infiltrated water then you drain it yeah, at a, a proper drainage. So with this also, it helps to reduce the amount of runoff, yeah, particularly if a project yeah, um, is um, uh, basically uh, facing a problem of uh, 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 flooding, for example, in that region. So with this, you can protect the slope, reduce the erosion, and then channel the water properly yeah, into the uh, proper uh, drainage in here. This is what we call it lateral diversion. Yeah? Yeah. So that is the principle. We call it the capillary barrier effect. Yeah, When you put fine green layer over coarse green layer, yeah, water will flow along the fine green layer and the coarse green layer okay, will act as a barrier. Water cannot penetrate this coarse green layer uh, and then will not uh, affect the, uh, the slope that you try to protect. Yeah. Now, see if I can show in here. Yeah. So the during rainfall, uh, there is a runoff, of course. There's also infiltration, but it will go into the uh, proper channel in here, right? And then I've got to drain it properly. Yeah. So that is uh, basically the idea of a uh, uh, capillary barrier system. So the soil remains dry. And of course, the length, we call it the diversion length, there is a limit to it. Yeah? We can design it yeah? the, depending on the thickness of your fine grain layer right? uh, to uh, it's basically the capacity for water to be able to be uh, absorbed or stored inside this fine grain layer. Yeah? Because if it's too much, of course, uh, water will break through the gravel layer. Yeah? And, and uh, uh, so these are the uh, calculations in the design. So the key thing is that we need to have the, um, uh, a very distinct yeah, uh, hydraulic properties between uh, the fine grain with the coarse grain, yeah, or between sand and gravel, uh, partic particularly with respect to the unsaturated condition. Yeah? So here as an example, if we use uh, fine sand, yeah, the blue one, uh, compared to the uh, gravelly sand, okay? so drying and wetting. Okay? So these are the um, soil properties that we use for a uh, particular uh, capillary barrier. And this is the uh, residual soil that we'll try to protect. Okay? And uh, if we convert, I mean, if we calculate the permeability function, unsaturated permeability function, right, for sand, and with respect to gravelly sand, okay, so this is uh, the coarse grain and this is the fine grain. Then you can have a conditions yeah, where your uh, permeability of your uh, uh, sand uh, gravel becoming lower than the permeability of sand under unsaturated condition. So the key thing is these um, uh, suctions 
when water start to enter yeah the 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 soil okay for example during the wetting so uh water enter the fine grain first okay so this is the call the water entry value assuming that this is the wetting curve so water will enter and then start to increase uh before suctions decreases okay, at the interface between fine and coarse grain okay, at this point then water will start to enter the coarse grain layer so that difference right we found it from our study okay we need to have at least 10 the ratio between uh, water entry value of the fine grain over the coarse grain layer okay and also the fine grain um uh, for example sand uh we like to have the value of the saturated permeability not too low yeah maybe to 10 to minus 5 uh, and above okay? higher than that so um water can flow freely through this fine sand okay uh, don't use for example uh clay sand because uh for uh, cohesive material um the change in water content is not that much yeah so in other words you cannot store that much of uh, water and also at the same time cannot give up amount of water okay um, uh, cannot dry it up uh, quickly uh, we need to have a uh, quite a steep soil water characteristic care for the sand and also the, for, for the cost green okay so the, we need distinct hydraulic properties yeah? so the difference between the um, uh, soil water characteristic curve, yeah, the water entry value for uh, the, the fine grain layer as opposed to the coarse grain layer should be about 10 times, and this has to be about 10 to minus five yeah, uh, and higher. Okay, that's capillary barrier, it's nothing new. Yeah, a uh, long time ago, people have used this. Okay, now for example, this is an example in Japan, as a tumulus mount using capillary uh, barrier. So uh, there's a stone chamber in here, there is a coarse grain layer and a fine grain layer. So water flow okay, along the fine grain layer and uh, coarse grain layer become a barrier. Yeah? As a result, you will have a dry chamber. Yeah? That's the way uh, uh, people have thought about it a long time ago. So not, not, uh, there is nothing new about this. Yeah? Similarly, if you've been to Korea, yeah, you see many of these uh, royal family tombs, right? Um, they put uh, all the, the wealth of uh, the king or queens inside this chamber. Of course, they don't want it to be flooded, so they put the coarse green material and the fine green material. As a result, water will flow only yeah, along the fine green material but it will not penetrate the coarse grain and keep the uh, burial cha chamber to be dry. Okay? So this is um, a cross sections of uh, uh, one particular uh, chamber that have been uh, uh, cut. And uh, you can see uh, the coarse grain material and the fine grain material. They put this um, uh, sand back because it be, uh, uh, need to be supported. Otherwise this will collapse, right? But uh, uh so th this is one of uh, one of the uh uh site where they they have cut the uh, fine green i mean the uh, this uh, royal tomb so over the years at ntu we have uh, done uh quite a bit of study yeah with respect to the uh, capillary barrier effect uh, uh, th uh through a column study okay and also through the um, uh, two-dimensional model uh, some of them actually, uh, our alumni from Indonesia, yeah, like Danny Tami from ITB and uh, uh, Indrawan, uh, Gede Indrawan from University of Gajah Mada and uh, uh, also Henry Krishnani from the uh, ITB alumni. Yeah? So they have done the PhD uh, with us. Uh, so these are the setup for the capillary barrier. Uh, through a, a column, so we use a column. Uh, we have two layers of soil, uh, fine sand, and we put gravelly sand in here. See if this can provide a barrier, so water cannot flow through. Right. So we rain it. Okay. Of course, we rain it. Uh, and when we rain it, uh, the changes in suctions or in negative water pressure only occur in the fine sand, but in the gravelly layer. Which, which provides us a, a barrier, okay? uh, it doesn't change that much, right? So uh, uh, this is an example 
uh, in one dimensional column, you can prove the existence of a barrier effect. Yeah, when you have two different layers having uh, uh, distinct, uh, two, uh, different, uh, distinctly different hydraulic properties. Yeah? So that is the, uh, uh, the, the, the measurements. We use uh, tensiometers and the uh, water content measurements, right? And then if we measure the water content using time domain refractometry, the red one here agrees. If you take all the samples throughout the column and measure the uh, water content, yeah, they agree uh, closely between the TDR and also the uh, oven drying. So take sample, put it in the oven, measure the water content. Yeah? That's a traditional way of measurement. Yeah? So, yeah, so it shows in here, uh, this water accumulated here, but below that is dry, yeah? Uh, because of this barrier yeah? uh, at the interface in here, we put the gravity sand. So we went into the two dimensional uh, where you have a fine grain of a coarse grain, uh, we have a rainfall simulator, measure the amount of runoff, uh, the flow that occur along this, um, uh, we, we call it the lateral diversions yeah, along the fine grain, and these are the coarse grain layer, right? Uh, we measure all this water balance, right? And then uh, with all the tensiometers and uh, water content measurements, yeah? So all those, uh, these are a weighing balance yeah, we have to measure the amount of water at different sections, yeah, at different layering of that capillary barrier. So that is the uh, rainfall simulator, fine green layer, fast green layer, yeah, you measure the, and also we have a section to measure the, um, uh, basically the uh, tensiometer to measure negative pressure and also the uh, uh, water content measurement using a time domain refractometry. Uh, here is the uh, precipitation and then these are the lateral diversions, water flow through the fine green layer, no breakthrough. The breakthrough is the red one. Yeah? When you apply higher rainfall, then um, the, uh, the storage from the sand layer is not enough and then breakthrough occur, right? And this uh, follow closely with the, in terms of the negative water pressure. Uh, when you apply rainfall, uh, your water pressure start to change, right? And water content also start to change, start to increase, right? And then you lower the precipitation and then the water pressure becomes more negative. The same thing water content also uh, will decrease. Okay, so agree closely with this. And uh, here's uh, the, uh, the PhD work by uh, Dr. Danny Tami, okay? also alumnus from ITB and Dr. Henry Chris Dani, uh, also alumnus from ITB. They, they both did their uh, PhD uh, with me okay, and uh, uh, on this capillary barrier. And this one here is uh, Dr. Gede, he, uh, uh, Gede Indrawan from University of Gajah Mada yeah. and uh, Inga from uh, University of Parahyangan and uh, uh, Dr. Tu, Trimin Tu also did his PhD with me. Um, both of them actually did PhD with me. Uh, and this is a Professor Fratland uh, uh, in front of that model, uh, uh, is a uh, it's quite a big scale model yeah, to uh, to test the barrier effect on slope. Then after that, uh, HDB wants to uh, repair one of the slope in here, right? Uh, it's uh, basically uh, always uh, fail during rainfall. Can we repair it using this method, capillary barrier system, right? And then after that, we also uh, try it at other uh, locations, a dock near the bus stop and at Tampines, we also look at a different um, combination, you know, um, in Singapore, very difficult to get aggregate, for example, uh, gravel. Can we change it using recycled material, like recycled concrete, right? So that's uh, uh, the idea behind this. So uh, let me go through, this is at the dock. Near the bus stop, we have problem with the slope failures around here, right? So that's the way we, we, we set up the, the fine green and coarse green layer. Okay? We are using GeoCell, yeah? and then um, uh, these are the uh, granite chips that we use, right? Contained in that GeoCell, okay? But that's the coarse green layer. And after that, uh, the final uh, topping, we put the 
uh, after the, the sand, then we put the uh, uh, topsoil, right, uh, to grow uh, uh, grass. Yeah? And we want to monitor, we wanted to monitor the performance of this capillary barrier compared to this uh, site that we thought the capillary barrier. Uh, that is where we have tensiometer here to measure negative water pressure. Can that negative water pressure be conserved uh, in, in the residual soil uh, that covered by the uh, capillary barrier system? Okay, And these are all these uh, pro protective boxes. So next to the bus stop here. So this is the small scale uh, repair work we are using uh, capillary barrier okay? that uh, uh, now is already there for a number of years. And there's another site where uh, the slope is uh, uh, quite badly damaged because of the uh, rainfall. Okay? So uh, once while there is a, a failure here, failure there. So uh, that is the setup that we uh, plan with respect to the uh, fine grain and coarse grain layer for the capillary barrier system. And then uh, we put all this uh, tubing is basically um, conduit for our tensiometers, uh, because we do not want to uh, penetrate through the uh, uh, capillary barrier. So we prepare everything, okay? So um, by the time everything's ready, and then we can insert our tensiometers, uh, all the instruments. So that is the laying of the bottom geo cell, yeah, is, and uh, we put the uh, coarse grain layer, and then after that, uh, the, the fine grain layer. Of course, uh, we need to use the J-pin, yeah, to hold that uh, geo cell uh, in, in place. And that is the, uh, uh, the laying of the fine grain layers. Yeah? And, and you can see in here, the tensiometer is already in, uh, installed uh, with all the gauges. Uh, so later on, we will monitor the performance of the residual soil slope below this capillary barrier. Okay? Particularly this area, uh, is next to all this uh, luxurious uh, uh, condominium. Right? So, uh, but this uh, land belongs to HDB, so HDB wants to uh, protect the slope, make sure that the slope uh, doesn't fail, uh, so it will not affect the, the neighbor. So these are all the tensiometers yeah, with the gauges for measuring the performance of a capillary barrier. And, and uh, we install it at different depths. Yeah, uh, so uh, these are the uh, measurements okay? um, under the same rainfall conditions. The slope with the uh, capillary barrier, right? The port of pressures yeah, remains essentially negative compared to the slope without the capillary barrier, right? So you can have positive port of pressures that may uh, reduce. This is uh, um, reduce the strength and also decreases the factor of safety. Okay? Uh, another site we use at the Tampinus. Okay? Uh, basically, um, we look at the uh, different uh, 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 cross-grain layer. And here we use a geo drain, and here we use a concrete aggregate because, uh, like I said, that the uh, aggregates are uh, expensive. So we want to. Um, uh, what you got to replace uh, instead of using gravel, we use uh, recycled concrete. Yeah, and these are original slope. And uh, the other side is to, to look at the effect of uh, shrubs and uh, vertebral grass, which is actually uh, deep rooted uh, grass. How do they affect affect the uh, uh, improve the factor safety of the slope with time? Okay, and also the measurements yeah, uh, of the negative pressures using the tensiometers. Yeah? Uh, for every section of that capillary barrier. So that is the working drawing for that capillary barrier. It's a, it's a snapshot of the construction uh, during this. And uh, that J pin, okay. Uh, they, these are the recycled crust uh, concrete aggregate. Right? Uh, so these are the uh, fine sand backfilling. So in the end, we monitor this. Uh, uh, for uh, uh, a period of time. Uh, these are the slope with capillary barrier system. The factor safety tends to be high compared to the original slope that we thought the capillary barrier system. So we capture all the spot of pressure and then run the stability analysis. Yeah? 
uh, using those uh, portal pressures in the slope. Okay? So it shows the effect of having a capillary barrier uh, as opposed to not having capillary barrier system. Again, here are the site uh, visit okay, by Professor Pratland. And we again, we have several uh, uh, former students here. This is uh, Andika, actually uh, from ITB. And then uh, uh, a professor from Korea, Professor Fredlin from Iran and uh, uh, from Malaysia. And uh, this is actually Dr. Alfredo. Uh, he's been doing uh, uh, quite a lot of things uh, in NTU. Yeah? So uh, he, he's now teaching uh, in the uh, Nazarbayev University in Kazakhstan. And yeah, he's from Vietnam and also he's uh, from Indonesia, from Petra, Surabaya. So we have quite a number of uh, students from you know, Indonesia that are uh, doing research in, in the NTU. Okay? So again, HDB uh, comes in picture and um, uh, would like to uh, continue to uh, explore a uh, possibility okay? uh, using this uh, barrier effect yeah? uh, for uh, retaining structures. That's why we uh, came uh, about with the name uh, geo barrier system. Yeah? So the capillary barrier system is basically, uh, it's a cover system for the slope, but the geo barrier system is for the retaining structures. The idea is uh, many of these flats, they have a, a, a basement car park. So what HDB wants to do is um, to have a, a basement a car park without the wall. Yeah? So uh, we, they, they do not want to have wall, so wall free a multi-level uh, basement car park. That means we need to protect the surrounding slopes, right? Uh, so we need to protect it um, uh, using uh, uh, geo barrier. So the idea is uh, usually capillary barrier at a slow, uh, low angle, yeah, maybe up to 10 degree, we can use it for land cover. This is for the slope protections, right? Again, uh, it, uh, people have done it for the land cover, uh, land cover or uh, waste mine. Yeah? However, usually it's in the dry uh, climate area where uh, they depend mainly on the evaporation. Yeah? But in Singapore, we have a high rainfall intensity. So that is a challenge when, when you set up, when you try to design for the capillary barrier system, right? And then also for a steeper slope, right? And then can we make it steeper yeah? so, to make it as like a retaining structure? Yeah? That, uh, is about the geo barrier system. So if we could have a uh, retaining structure where we have uh, uh, a series of bags in here uh, containing the fine grain, non-cohesive, for example, sand, then uh, behind it, we have a gravel layer, then that will be a very good system to retain the structures behind it. Yeah? We can have a steeper slope. And so this will be a retaining structure, right? So the, the idea is uh, basically uh, they would like to have a uh, basement uh, without the wall. So there will be a, a very uh, nice flow of air circulation, also for safety and also for the lighting. So that, uh, that is the idea. Uh, but they also would like to have this wall, not concrete wall, but they wanted to have a wall that is green. Yeah? So it's uh, pleasing uh, to uh, the environment, particularly at the basement level here. So uh, GBS is a retaining structure incorporating capillary barrier system, non-cohesive fine and cost recycle materials are used. Now we are using recycled materials directly okay, because we want to make sure our system is sustainable and because of the scarcity of the aggregate. So we need to uh, uh, use this um, uh, what do you call the recycled material. And the uh, appearance of GBS enhanced to uh, incorporate suitable vegetation and added green cover. Uh, GBS reduces the coefficient of runoff because you take care you know, through the infiltration into the, uh, the fine grain layer, eh? avoiding flooding and prevent erosions on the original slope itself uh, during rainfall, since rainwater is directed properly into main drainage uh, through the drainage layer. Yeah. So uh, these are the locations where we 
uh, have uh, constructed the geobarrier system. Uh, again, we use a geobag, yeah? so containing the fine grain layer here. And this one is the gravel layer. Okay? And of course, the geobag is with the geogrid. Okay? Uh, it's like a tie bag. Yeah? And then the, the one in front, the green one, uh, contains, uh, we call it the topsoil or approved soil mixture for planting. So the purpose of the green bag here is for planting only, right? So big enough for the root to grow and we can uh, plant uh, big plants as well, yeah? And these are the fine grain, for example, uh, recycle, fine recycle uh, concrete and these are the coarse recycle concrete. And these are the residual soil that need to be uh, protected. So that is a schematic diagram, uh, fine green over uh, the coarse green. Okay? Um, so, and then the, uh, the, the front back is uh, basically for planting. Yeah? And we use a uh, proof soil mixture. Uh, so this is an example. So this is the, uh, the, uh, the Joe bag for planting, yeah? containing the topsoil, yeah? organic material and everything. And then after the fine green layer, and that is the, the gravel layer, right? So let me just see if I can. Yeah, so if we look at like this, right? So this is the um, approved soil mixture back and with the plant in here. And these are the geo grid, okay? These are all containing in the geo bag with the pocket, yeah, in front of it. So we can put the root yeah, into that geo bag. And these are the fine green layer and the coarse green layer, we just compact gravel on top of it. Uh, at this particular site, we need to use a sum because uh, uh, we're not allowed to use the uh, public drainage. So that's why we, we, we have this sum. But in the real uh, construction, uh, permanent construction, uh, all this can be channeled into the uh, drainage layer. Right? So of course, we need to have some measurements. Yeah? So we need to measure uh, the performance of this uh, site using tensiometers yeah, and also the uh, uh, water content. So just quickly go through here. We have uh, four. Uh, this happened to be in uh, Orchard Road. So <laughs> it's very fortunate we could get a site there because after that, uh, they used this site to build a, a very uh, a high rise. And then it costs uh, quite a lot to, to build the, uh, I mean, to, 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 to have a location at the, uh, the orchard happened at that time was a vacant land so we can use it for our experiment. So this is only for a pilot study. Uh, slope one, two, three, and four. So we are using the uh, recycled concrete, RCA recycled concrete over coarse recycled concrete, a uh, fine recycled asphalt over coarse recycled asphalt. Here is a uh, fine re recycled as, uh, concrete. Uh, over uh, cost recycle asphalt. And this is the original slope. Yeah? So uh, remember this original slope is at a low angle, 56 degree, but this one here, we're going to make it steep yeah, to, uh, as a retaining structure to 70 degree. So that is your slope four, slope one, two, three, okay? uh, different combinations. If you look through from the crest, this is the view. Yeah? And um, so we have that, uh, uh, we got the GBS for slope one, slope two, slope three with the plant. This is the final product. Uh, this is the fine recycle asphalt, uh, concrete, recycle, uh, cost recycle concrete, and this is the asphalt, right? That is the fine recycle concrete and cost recycle concrete, recycle asphalt. And all of them okay, have the soil water characteristic care. So these are the green size distribution of each material. And these are the uh, soil water characteristic care yeah, for each material. So we could um, measure uh, the soil water characteristic care uh, based on the laboratory experiment, like I mentioned early on. Yeah? And these are the permeability of the, uh, the different material. Yeah? So all these uh, property characterizations, yeah, particularly for the unsaturated soil uh, property need to be done before we can use it in the calculation. In the event that you do not have uh, uh, laboratory test results, uh, there's a guideline that, that we just uh, produced together with uh, Dr. Mercer from um, Western Australia, and then uh, also the Dr. Alfredo. Yeah? Uh, 
uh, is uh, basically the guideline uh, based on the uh, different uh, categories of uh, classifications of uh, USCS, Unified Salt Classification System, then you can estimate yeah, your salt water characteristic curve. And also, yeah, from there, you can estimate your permeability function and others. Um, these are the components of the geobarrier system that we use, right? Um, so, uh, and the geobag is the woven geotextile, and then the, uh, the, the front bag uh, is basically uh, fine material yeah? and the geogrid. So, that is uh, the geobag, okay? Uh, to contain the approved soil mixtures, right? So, you can see all this pocket is uh, basically to place the root yeah, uh, of these plants. And we have a geogrid at the back there, connected to the ASM back. So that's the, yeah. the tendon, okay? Uh, this is the uh, planting pockets in yeah, the front. And these are the geotextile used in the, um, uh, from 10K, okay? uh, And then the specifications of the geobags, and then these are the geogrid that we use. Yeah? Uh, well, Originally, I mean, during the pilot study, we have to compact the saw okay, uh, practically manually, back for back, and after that, stack them up. Yeah? Uh, but later on, we have the uh, collaborations with a specialized, uh, specialist uh, contractor, right, uh, called Hawk Lim. So Hawk Lim uh, hold the, uh, basically the licensing, yeah, to, because this uh, uh, GBS is uh, patented. Yeah? So, uh, Hocklim, the one that actually constructed in many areas, and then he, uh, they also uh, automate uh, the um, compactions of this uh, uh, geo bag. Okay, uh, so with that, uh, we can increase the productivity uh, of, of producing bags uh, for, uh, for uh, real constructions. Okay? So, and then these are the compactions on site. Okay, these are the activities. Yeah? This is finally we have that. Uh, uh, GBS constructed with the plant. Okay? Those are all the uh, materials to be used. Okay? Okay. So you can see here, all the bags are stacked up. Okay? We have four meter high, uh, 70 degree. Uh, during that uh, visit, okay, um, uh, this is our uh, Murray Fredland, okay? the, the third author of the second book. And uh, he's actually the developer for the SB Plux, uh, SB Solid, right? That the, um, uh, the software, the geotechnical software. Here are all my uh, PhD students, right? Uh, Dr. Kip uh, from Korea, Dr. Chai Chen is teaching at so Southeast uh, University, and uh, Dr. Alfredo has done a lot of work uh, in NTU okay? uh, with respect to the soil and also this uh, CBS and GBS, right? And here are the, uh, our uh, local partner. So that's the final product of the GBS. And uh, these are the plant growth over the year, yeah? capture in here from 2016, uh, June until June 2017. The uh, species, the plant species are selected by the landscape engineer from HDB because they want to have plants that can survive. Okay? Uh, under uh, low sunlight because it's uh, near the basement area. And of course, we need to have some monitoring. Okay? We put the uh, tensiometers and uh, moisture content measurements. Yeah? Uh, uh, these are the tensiometers and these are the uh, uh, time domain reptometry. And also we measure uh, uh, the stress using uh, the for, uh, stress using the load cell and the uh, weather station. So these are the measurements uh, using tensiometers, huh? installations. And these are during the installations of the uh, TDR, uh, Cassegrandry uh, piezometers. And uh, these are the measurements using the load cell. Okay? These are the weather station. Okay? Uh, all hooked up to data acquisition system. Okay? Uh, the positions of all those uh, instruments. Huh? So I'll go through quickly. Uh, these are the monitoring data over the year. Uh, the daily rainfall and the monthly rainfall, right? And uh, sorry, uh, these are the cumulative uh, uh, yearly, and uh, the, the positions of water table uh, remain essentially constant, okay, um, due to the, the rainfall. 
the portal pressures okay or the original slope okay uh it varies uh, a bit okay and uh, but for the uh behind the gps uh, they've been negative uh, throughout uh, the period under the same rainfall okay so the same thing with the volumetric water content as well yeah and um we did the analysis using finite element analysis for this uh for this rainfall condition and then uh they agree uh, the results from the numerical analysis with the measurement from the field with respect to the uh, uh moisture content and also the uh the uh suction or the negative water pressure yeah so we have a uh, very good agreement now if we look at the factor of safety uh the original slope has a higher factor of safety compared to the uh the one that behind the retaining structure because here your your uh slope angle is only 36 degree yeah but here we have 70 degree yeah but during rainfall there's a fluctuation in terms of the factor of safety up and down depends on the rainfall but behind the gps yeah the factor of safety remain uh essentially constant so all are captured in this monograph you can uh uh, uh obtain that monograph okay, because we had a seminar to publicize this uh we can obtain it from our uh, uh, uh library yeah uh, this is a digital library that uh, created in ntu for the unsighted soil mechanic inside here we have lots of uh, data with respect to the uh, slope stability and also uh, tree stability due to uh, uh rainfall uh here is the um Again, uh, GBS has been endorsed and uh, by uh, HDB. Okay? This is from their website. You can pick up all those uh, information with respect to the GBS, and uh, has been used in the uh, 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 constructions uh, in the, the permanently uh, constructed uh, uh, in the different um, HDB uh, area. Yeah? So here is the uh, permanent constructions at uh, North Shore. You can see uh, people start, I uh, mean, uh, uh, planting all this uh, vegetation. And those are all the back with the uh, uh, planting pockets. Yeah? And uh, they also provide sprinkler, yeah? basically, is to uh, let the, uh, all this plant to grow healthily. Yeah? So that's a fun project. So you can see here this um, uh, car park, yeah? there is no wall. Yeah? And next to it, uh, the, the slopes are protected yeah, using this uh, geo barrier system, uh, and yet um, the, the wall is green. Yeah? So that is uh, now the plant has grown uh, quite healthily. Yeah? So there are lots of uh, possible usage of this uh, capillary barrier. Yeah? Uh, for example, uh, we can use it for like uh, even the community gardening, right? Uh, you can uh, plant uh, 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 through this uh, GBS okay? uh, because these are the uh, planting bag, uh, all kind of uh, plants in here. Uh, or uh, for the green corridor, right? uh, we can have uh, uh, a GBS to protect the, the slope next to it. Uh, or for the highway, along the highway. Yeah. Or even um, if there is a plan to build a, a polder, yeah, but basically because of the seawater uh, rise, right? Uh, then we need to protect uh, uh, the land yeah, from the seawater rise. So the inside part of this, uh, we can uh, construct GPS as well, right? And we can utilize uh, this area and yet uh, uh, provide the uh, uh, greeneries as well. So in conclusions, the port of pressure variation predicted from the numerical analysis agree with those obtained from the field data, indicating the performance of the, both the CBS and GBS. Uh, a numerical procedure using the information in CP could be used to predict the port of pressure characteristic within the GBS slope, yeah, especially during the inform. And the GBS slope performed well in minimizing rain water and maintaining uh, the stability of slope during rainfall. Yeah? So this is the, the retaining structure, but uh, similarly, 
for the capillary barrier system, yeah, for the slope cover, uh, it performed well as well yeah, to protect the slope yeah, uh, over a number of years. Okay, I think this may be the end of my uh, presentation. All right, thank you. I'll be happy to answer uh, your questions, if any. Okay, Professor, uh, very excellent and very interesting presentation. Uh, we have uh, quite a question here. Maybe I will start uh, from the first one. This is from Afik Kumar Mandal. Uh, sir, does it require to put some amount of fine grain or silty clay type of soil as the capping layer? for the protection against any occurrence of erosion of the top design fine sand layer at the early stage immediately after the laying of uh, the, the topmost layer where there is no growth of vegetation. So at the early stage. Yes, uh, uh, excellent question. Because uh, uh, yes, all those calorie barrier uh, system uh, after you put the fine green layer, then you can put uh, uh, erosion blanket if you want to, and then the, after that you can put the topsoil to grow uh, uh, grasses and uh, vegeta uh, vegetation. So we have done it in, in many uh, slopes; uh, they they grow very well yeah? without uh, sacrificing the barrier effect uh, uh, of this capillary barrier system. Okay, uh, I hope it's answer your question, Mr. Afik Kumar. And the second question, Prof, uh, mm -hmm. from uh, Mr. Michael Dobi. Uh, uh, thanks for a very interesting talk. Uh, can you say something about tensiometer, what they consist of, and how they operate, and uh, the reliability of the tensiometer? Maybe some of us uh, don't know uh, about tensiometer. Yeah. Uh, tensiometer is similar like piezometer. Yeah? Uh, the only thing is um, for uh, piezometer, you measure the positive water pressure, but for tensiometers, you measure negative water pressure. Yeah? So actually, it's a tube. Yeah? It's like a plastic tube. Uh, inside, is filled with water. Yeah? And then at the bottom of the tube, you have uh, what they call it a high air entry ceramic cup. Now, you cannot use uh, 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 low air entry. We need to use a high air entry. For example, um, uh, the, the air entry value uh, of uh, 100 kilopascal. In other words, um, you can have negative water pressure up to 100. Yeah? Air will not penetrate this disc. The disc, yeah, the cup remains saturated. Yeah? So otherwise, okay, uh, if... Um, uh, the, what you call the, uh, the suction is the higher than the air entry value of the cup, air will enter the cup and also enter the tensiometer. As a result, you have lots of air inside the tensiometer, right? So in uh, a good tensiometer is basically uh, when you come in contact with negative water pressure, the water inside the tensiometers will be in tension. And that tension is measured using vacuum gauge or pressure transducer. However, if um, uh, the uh, air entry value of the, the cup is exceeded, air enter uh, the uh, tensiometer collected inside the tube, then what do we have? When we measure it, we measure zero suction. Why? Because we measure air pressure. Yeah air pressure atmospheric. That is why uh, in some cases, we always heard the story that uh, the measurement shows there is no suction, no suction, because actually air bubble uh, uh, accumulated inside the tensiometer. That what you are measuring is actually is zero suction or uh, air pressure uh, from the air bubble. Yeah, the, uh, that is why it is important, the drier the, uh, the soil, yeah, I mean, for example, during long uh, period of uh, dry uh, weather, uh, the suction can be quite high. There is a possibility that um, uh, air will enter or cavitations will take place inside the water. Then you need to flush 
this water. So make sure that the tensiometer remains saturated all the time. Uh, so you can uh, pick up the, the real suction measurement. However, uh, we are also developing okay, uh, in NTU, we call it osmotic tensiometer. Okay? So the osmotic tensiometer is basically, uh, we put the, a polymer in a chamber and we stress up the, uh, the polymer. When we, uh, when we wet the polymer, it's going to uh, cause uh, uh, swelling pressure inside the chamber, maybe 1,500 kilopascal. Then when that polymer, uh, I mean, that the osmotic tensiometer comes in contact with negative water pressure, that uh, swelling pressure or will decrease okay, from 1,400 become 1,000. So that difference gives you that negative water pressure inside the salt. Yeah, so that is the, uh, the new development that we are you know, working on, uh, the developing the uh, osmotic tensiometers. Yeah, and uh, um, there is the, there's one publication already in ESTM, and uh, the next one uh, will come up in geotechnic with respect to the, uh, uh, the osmotic tensiometers. I hope that answered the uh, questions. Very interesting uh, research, uh, Professor, the new one. <laughs> the new one, yeah. Because yes. your, your tensiometers, the, the regular tensiometer, is limited to 100 kilopascal only. Yes. And we know that the suctions inside the soil can be very high, right? So that yeah. is why uh, we need to uh, extend the capacity of tensiometer. Uh, one way of doing it is using the osmotic tensiometer. Okay. Uh, the next question, uh, also from um, Mr. Michael Dobby. Uh, uh, please, could you also provide an explanation of how the enormously high matrix suction uh, can exist at low volumetric water content and how significant is the contribution to the overall effective stress in the soil? Okay, good question. Uh, suction exists in the, in the, in the soil, right? Um, so actually we should look at the soil as a general case is uh, in general soil is unsaturated. Yeah? Under a special case, soil becomes uh, saturated. Yeah? This is a special case. So for unsaturated soil, you have net normal stress and matrix suction. These are the two. The net normal stress, it comes from the uh, overburden, from the loading and the suctions yeah, is basically that come from the uh, environmental uh, conditions, right? Uh, infiltration, evaporation, cause the change in suction. So when the soil becomes saturated, yeah, your suction goes to zero and your net normal stress, which is uh, sigma minus pore air pressure become sigma minus pore water pressure. Because uh, when soil becomes saturated, your air pressure equal to water pressure, then the two stress state variables become one we call it the uh, effective stress. Yeah? However, the other end is called the dry soil. So when you uh, let the soil okay, from inside to become very, very dry, yeah? and then suction will increase. Yeah? Uh, from thermodynamics, we learn that the highest is about 1 million kilopascal suction. Right? Uh, however, um, at the dry condition, the effect of suction is basically in, insignificant. Yeah? Just like uh, if you look at the shrinkage curve, yeah? uh, you keep on drying the soil, come to the shrinkage limit, beyond that, yeah, you keep on drying the soil, yeah? suction keep on increasing, but the soil doesn't change volume at all. In other words, the effect of suction in changing the volume, changing the shear strength of the soil uh, is basically uh, uh, insignificant. Therefore, for dry soil, the stress state variable is total stress minus pore air pressure only, net normal stress. In other words, like when the sand becomes so dry, right, uh, the suction is quite high, yeah, but the, uh, the sand becomes loose, then you need the confining pressure, right, uh, to uh, provide the strength for the soil, yeah, not the suction anymore. So that is the, the, the difference. Yes, suction at uh, dry soil, suction can be very high, uh, but it, it is not significant yeah, in controlling the behavior of the soil. That's why suction no longer um, 
considered as a stressed variable for dry soil. Uh, so I think we have to look from that point of view. The soil is unsaturated in general. Yeah? Then special case is saturated, and the other extreme is dry soil. Okay, Professor. So there is a range where suction is uh, optimum uh, yeah. to affect the strength of the That's soil. Right. Yeah, uh, you can look at more or less like soil water characteristic there. By the time you reach the residual suction, yeah, more or less you already have no effect. Basically, we keep on changing the uh, suction, increasing the suction. The soil doesn't change volume that much. The wa wa uh, water volume also will not change that much. Yeah. So, but residual suction. Okay. Uh... Maybe we just uh, uh, try to answer the next question. Uh, professor, uh, this is from Mr. Aris Handoko. Uh, professor, if we use vegetation at the surface for geoberry system, how about the behavior of fine grain and coarse grain layer when uh, they are penetrated by many plants root? Uh, is there any change uh, of the permeability that affect the system? Yes, good question. Um, for the, uh, you're talking about the geobarrier system, right? Uh, it's contained in the back, yeah? It's about, uh, uh, the, uh, the width is about uh, 50 centimeter to 60 uh, centimeter, which is quite big, yeah? Uh, it's about one meter long. And then, uh, so a big volume of uh, uh, topsoil inside this back. So the, and then the, um, the, the root actually uh, grows within that back alone yeah, because the landscape engineers have uh, studied respect to the, the root distribution. And in, in some cases, we also pull out, the, like the pilot study at Orchard, uh, in the end, we demolish everything and we pull out. So the, the, the plant uh, root remain in the uh, GBS bag, right? did not penetrate into the, uh, uh, the sand layer. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, next question. Uh, so how, from Mr. Afik again. So how how does the required thickness of the top fine sand layer of the capillary barrier system is determined based on the intensity and total amount of the rainfall? Is there any design chart for the thickness and uh, gradation required for the top fine grain soil yeah. along with the bottom? Maybe. Yeah. It, yeah, it's a good question. How to design it? Uh, exactly correct based on the local climate. Yeah? So you can uh, estimate how much, uh, what is the uh, highest rainfall amount that can occur in that particular area. Then you have to prepare uh, the, the basically the volume of sand, yeah? the, the pore volume, yeah? to take in that uh, uh, amount of water. But be mindful, <laughs> uh, if we look at the sand layer itself, right? They are not fully saturated yeah, because there is suction inside the sand. So if there is suction, there is a, a water content distribution. Yeah? Uh, so in, in other words, not all the pores will be filled with uh, water. Yeah? Uh, it is not like fully saturated, okay, but uh, that there is a suction inside the, the, the sand layer itself. And that will determine uh, the maximum amount of uh, uh, water volume. So that is the uh, capacity. Yeah? I have a paper on that one. I can send it to, uh, to him uh, uh, to, to, to determine the amount of water yeah? uh, inside the sand. So with the sand layer, yes, the thickness is determined by the local climate. Yeah? However, the coarse green layer doesn't have be doesn't have to be too thick, yeah. It's just uh, uh, a layer that provides the uh, uh, a barrier effect. That's all. But the sand layer is important. Uh, depends on the local climate. Yeah. Okay. Is there any, at any of your books uh, the design chart that uh, the um, not in the book? Uh, we don't have. I mean, specifically the design chart for it. But we, I mean, I have a paper to give the criteria, right? Whereby we we we, we indicate uh, uh, there is a difference in the hydraulic properties, right? Uh, how much is the difference? There is a water entry value 
ratio minimum tank. Uh, the larger, the better. Okay. <laughs> then how about the saturate permeability of the uh, of the sand layer itself? Can it be uh, uh, 10 to minus uh, 4 or higher? That's good, but not lower than 10 to minus 5, right? Because when it's too low and then water cannot flow easily through the sand, okay? And the other one also, the soil the characteristic curve of that fine grain layer should be quite steep. In other words, water can drain out very fast and then also wet it very quickly also during rainfall. We do not want the uh, salt water characteristic curve that is flat because the water volume change is very small. Uh, you apply very high suction, right? It drains a little bit of water. Then after that, you wet it again. Yeah? It will take up a little bit of water. So drying and wetting will be very, very slow. And we do not want that. We want it to have a very steep SWCC. Uh, all this, uh, I have, uh, what do you call them? Um, uh, put them together into a paper in one of my uh, lecture. But I mean, just give me the um, the name and an email. I can send it to uh, uh, Mr. Taufik, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, now another question, uh, Professor. This is about the geocell uh, uh, from uh, Miss Miss or Mrs. Felicia Devita Salim. Yeah. Uh, I would like to ask you about how to design the dimension of the final layer and the coarse layer using geocell. Are there any standard that we must use? And then what kind of cases that we can use geobear system? What so, kind of, sorry? Uh, what kind of cases that we oh. can use geobear system? Okay. Uh, we have tested this. Uh, 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 okay, there are two questions. One is a capillary barrier and the other one geobearer, yeah. right? Yes. Okay, for the capillary barrier, uh, like what we uh, discussed just now, yeah, mainly the design of the sand in itself. So that will be the capacity, okay, depending on the local climate. Yeah? And after that, uh, of course, you need to put the J pin and then you measure the, I mean, calculate the stability of the slope, right? Yeah, so uh, that is, um, uh, is a, a, what do you call the, uh, conventional procedures with respect to the stability. But uh, the key thing is the, the thickness of that sand layer. They have to be determined based on the uh, uh, local climate. The other one is geo barrier system. Under what condition it can be used? Yes, yes. Yeah. And about the geo cell, what kind of oh, use? We, we don't use geo cell in the geo barrier system. Mm -hmm. For the geo barrier system, we use uh, geo back. The geo cell only we use it for capillary barrier because uh, the slope angle may be about 35 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the challenge that we had at the time to design the geo barrier system is basically for steeper slope than that normally people have done it in geo environmental yeah, for the cover system for waste or for landfill. Slope angle may be eight to 10 degrees, but for us, we want to have it for 35 degrees. And on top of that, in the, in, uh, mainly uh, designed for the cover system uh, in, uh, in the dry climate, right? Based on the evaporation only, right? But for us in Singapore, we cannot depend on evaporations to take up the water. <laughs> it's too low. I mean, uh, too slow. Yeah, uh, we have lots of water compared to, lots of rainfall compared to evaporation. So we need to, let the water to flow laterally. That's why we have to calculate that lateral diversion before water can enter the drain and then will be uh, drain it. So at certain sections, we should have a uh, surface drain okay, to, to drain the water out. Cannot be all the way for a 40 meter long capillary barrier without any uh, section, yeah, without any uh, drain to drain the water from that. For geo barrier, we don't use uh, geo cell, but we use uh, geo bag, yeah. Uh, so there is a woven geo bag with a geo grid, yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, th those are the one that we use for the uh, geo barrier system. Okay, so uh, next question uh, from Trihan Diorendi Satria. Okay, uh, very interesting presentation, Professor. I would like to ask how to maintain the permeability of coarse grain soil. So it can still be considered as barrier system. 
Is there any special treatment and what is the biggest challenge to protect the bear for water uh, breakthrough? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, for water to break through, you mean? Yes. Yeah, that is why uh, what we need to do is to calculate. Um, if we know the capacity of the fine grain layer, yeah? uh, we can do the analysis how long should be the fine grain uh, layer, the length. Because if it is too long and water remains saturated, yeah, the pressures build up, then eventually um, uh, what the water will penetrate into the gravel layer. However, if we, we can, uh, there is a, a kind of empirical calculation, but we can also do a, a seepage analysis right, using finite element. Uh, we can calculate how long uh, is the, the length of the lateral maximum lateral diversion uh, before breakthrough occurs? That can be calculated. Okay. Uh, one more question here uh, from Mr. Michael Doby. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many university in the Southeast Asia have specialist unsaturated soil mechanics program of laboratories. Uh, but do you interact with Kasasat uh, Uni in Bangkok? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> suddenly, um, I, I know, I, I know uh, uh, which which one is talking. Uh, uh, Apinity, probably uh, his name. Uh, so yes, I have. Uh, I mean, the, uh, uh, I mean, contact casually uh, the, from time to time with uh, Professor Apinity yeah, from Bank uh, Kasasate University. Okay. Okay. Um, Hopefully, many uh, universities uh, start to teach unsaturated soil mechanic professor. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. in fact, actually, uh, we already have uh, quite a number of them, right? Uh, in Parahyangan, uh, Dr. Rinda uh, did uh, a PhD also in unsaturated soil, and then Dr. Martin, uh, and uh, also in ITB now, we have uh, uh, Dr. Sugan uh, Pistanto, right? So, and uh, in the uh, uh, other places in 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 Indonesia, there, there are quite a number. Uh, uh, Palembang, maybe yes. Sorry, Is, uh, Mrs. Nuri or ah, that's right, yeah. Doctor uh, Prof. Gofar from the University. I mean, in in Palembang, right? Yes, yes. Uh, she, she, so, she was also with me in <laughs> uh, in uh, NTU for uh, a number of years. So we did. Uh, in fact, actually, this geo barrier system that she's uh, she worked on that as well as part of our research team. Yeah. So yeah, uh, uh, there are quite a number of um, uh, what uh, universities uh, in Indonesia now start uh, working into the unsaturated soil. I think it's good, I mean, uh, particularly when the soil has uh, lots of this residual soil, volcanic soil, and problem with the uh, landslide from time to time, right? Even uh, we have problems with the swelling place, right? That was unsaturated to start with. Right? And when we come in contact with water and soil uh, swell, right? So yes. the understanding of unsaturated soils is important because, I mean, in general, soil is unsaturated. Right? Good. Okay, okay Professor. Uh, maybe uh, we have a lot of time now. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation today. It is a very excellent and uh, very interesting, and we hope to solve the problem with with uh, the uh, geo barrier system and capillary barrier system. Okay, yeah. thank you very much, Professor. Okay, thank you. I'm putting it to uh, Miss Stephanie. Thank you, Professor Haryanto Raharjo for the presentation. And also thank you to Dr. Rinda Karlina Sari as well the moderator for guiding the session. Now, we are heading to the quiz session that will be guided by Ms. Riva. Please welcome Ms. Riva. The time is yours. OK. Um... Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rifa, and I will be guiding uh, the short quiz that we have prepared. Uh, the questions are all prepared by um, 
by uh, our speaker, Professor Harianto. Okay, so let me share uh, the screen. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have prepared the total price of 250,000 rupiah. The first winner of the quiz will get 150,000 and second winner will get 100,000 rupiah. To give you a disclaimer before we play, everyone can join this quiz, but for technical reasons, only those who live in Indonesia are eligible to get the prize. So you can now directly go to your browser on your phone or on your PC and type menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com, menti.com. And you have to type the code numbers shown on your screen or also there in the chat box. The code is 9893-3300. The code is 9893-3300. Once again, you can go now to menti.com and put the code 9893-3300. Then fill in your name and make sure that it is the name that you submit in the registration for this webinar. If you forget, you can now see on your uh, display name on your Zoom. So later, if you win, the committee will easily contact you for the prize. Remember, the prize is very interesting, 250,000 rupiah for two winners. And you will not want to miss this chance. For those who live in Indonesia, you will be eligible to get the prize. But everyone can join this game. So now go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com. Put the code 9893-3300 and fill in your name. I will be waiting. Let's see how many uh, who already joined. Okay. Okay, now we have 67, uh, 70 people joining us. Go to menti.com and type the code 9893-3300. I will be waiting for another minute. We have three questions. All questions are prepared uh, by our speakers, Prof Professor Haryantor Harjo. So we will be having two winners tonight. Uh, the first winner will get 150,000 rupiah and the second winner will get 100,000 rupiah. So the total is 250,000 rupiah. So we will still be waiting. All right. You don't want to miss this chance. The total of 250,000 rupiah, type menti.com on your PC or your um, phone browser and then type the code 9893-3300 and make sure you type name that you put on the registration or uh, is now on your uh, display name on Zoom. Okay, I uh, will be doing the countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We have 83 people uh, who will be playing uh, the quiz. The first question. Answer fast to get more points. The difference between capillary barrier system or CBS and geo barrier system or GBS. First option, they are an identical system but have two different names. Second option, CBS is a slope cover and GBS is a retaining structure. Or is it the third option? Principles of unsaturated soil mechanics is only applicable to CBS. You have roughly 20 seconds to answer the questions. But remember, if you answer faster, you will get more points. So is it the first option, the second option, or the third answer? 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, time's up. Let's see. The correct answer is 
the second option. CBS is a slope cover and GBS is a retaining structure. Let's see who leads the leaderboard for the first question. So for the first question, but not yet the winner, we have, well, the name is not found with 985 points. Let's see for the second, oops, sorry, there, there must be a technical uh, problem, wait. Next question, under unsaturated condition, first option, gravel may have a lower unsaturated permeability than fine sand. Second option, gravel will always have higher unsaturated permeability than fine sand. Or third option, gravel and sand will always have the same unsaturated permeability. You have 20 seconds roughly to answer the question. Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. Let's see the correct answer. The correct answer is the first option. Gravel may have a lower unsaturated permeability than fine sand. Let's see who leads the leaderboard for the second question. The fastest is Livio with 985 points. Let's see the next question. Answer fast to get more points. Capillary barrier effect depends on the distinct differences in first option, unsaturated shear strength properties of layers. Second option, unsaturated hydraulic properties of layers or the third option and separated compressibility properties of layers you have 30 seconds let's see who will win the game twenty more seconds is it the first the second or the third option five four Three, two, one, time's up. Let's see. The correct answer is unsaturated hydraulic properties of layers. Let's see who win the game. The fastest is Martin Wijaya, but congratulations to Mila Kusuma Wardani as the first uh, winner. And second winner will be uh, Randy with 1,882 points. Thank you for playing. The committee will um, the committee will will contact the winners, and I will uh, give the control back to Miss Stephanie SDMC. Thank you, everyone, for playing. All right, that's it for the quiz session and congratulations for the winners. Now, we would like to invite you to join the next Geosynthetic Webinar Series on October 21st, 2021 with the theme Implication of Geotechnical Engineering Principle in Design and Construction of Geosynthetic Rainfall Wall. The speaker for the next webinar will be Professor Chung si Q. You can register via the link bit.ly slash webinar in IGS 10. Once again, 
We would like to invite you to join the next Geosynthetic Webinar Series on October 21st, 2021 with the theme Implication of Geotechnical Engineering Principle in Design and Construction of Geosynthetic Reinforced Wall. The speaker for the next webinar will be Professor Chung CQ. You can register via the link bit.ly slash webinar in IGS 10. Now, we would like to inform you that you can access the e certificate and also the soft copy of the presentation from the speaker at the link bit.ly slash info in IGS 09. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now we have come to the end of this webinar. It's been a pleasure being with all of you this evening. Thank you for the part your participation from the beginning to the end of the webinar. Hope we could see you in the next webinar. I wish you a very good evening. Always remember to stay safe and stay healthy. Goodbye and see you in the next webinar.